welcome to part four of building WR Smith's grasshopper clock and today I've installed the feet I put the uh, we've made the buttons and we've made the screws and there's the feet installed and two of the buttons and two of the screws all blued up we're going to be bluing them and uh, we'll also be polishing them and there's the screws up at the top and uh, that's what we're going to be doing today all right let's go down to the bandsaw all right, we're going to start off by cutting a, the big piece of brass here to make the four big uh, buttons or washers that we need. Face it off first and then center drill it. We have to drill in a ways here to be able to make four buttons. Here we are in AutoCAD and this is the button design. And you see in this red lines here that represents the screw that will be in the center of the button. This is the bit we're going to use to cut the round grooves. And let's look at the grooves. There you go. Those are the two grooves that we're going to cut in the end of each one of the buttons. This is a grinder table that I made years ago. And it gets me in all the positions I need to make the different bits that I use. These are uh, jigs that I use to set the table at the angles that I need. Normally I use the angle 8, 5, and 15. Today for the side angle we're going to use 8 and uh, this jig lets you set the table up real fast and get it ready and that's going to be the side relief all the way around on this uh, uh, groove bit that we're going to be making now and now we're starting to grind our high speed bit here we're just grinding either side trying to keep it parallel in there getting it down to the uh, uh, the size of the diameter that we want but keeping it uh, keeping them parallel to give us an idea of how to make our radius. Trying not to heat the bit up too much. Got just a little more to go here. So now we're going to try our little bit more, just a, just a tiny little bit more. There we go. Now our radius, you're just barely touching, just kissing the side of the stone with it. You don't, I don't push hard at all. Very slow and easy. Now I got to flatten it out and make sure I've got a nice polished top so that you're cutting uh, your cutting edges nice and sharp no grooves or anything like that so got to be nice and flat zero rake for brass well there you go there's a that's a pretty good look at it there as you can see it now up against that so let's go ahead down to the lathe. There's a piece of that brass that we were working on earlier and now we're cutting the grooves. This is the second groove in there. Yes, yeah, I sped it up quite a bit here. Uh, this is uh, parting it off. This is the last button. Now I'm going to be reversing it and putting it back on here so I can face it. I've used two parallels just to get it where I need to and then I'll tighten it. Not real tight but just enough. That'll get it. And then we'll use the bump here. We'll bring the bump in and get it finally uh, all, all situated ready for parting or uh, ready for uh, facing. And now we'll tighten it all up. And uh, you can see I left a little pipe on there uh, with the way I keep my uh, cutoff tool a little bit low. So we'll get rid of that first. We'll cut that off first. There you go. And get down close to the line. We'll finish them all off together. Make sure they're all the same exact size. This is where the CNC comes in handy with these repetitive cuts. I don't want to go too aggressive because it's not held by a lot. 
So I use a lot of little light cuts to get in there to my line. And now we're using the painting tool to cut a little groove, a little indent in the ends of each one so they'll sit nice and flat on the plates. Clean it up in a little bit of lacquer thinner and get a look at it here. This is water hardening tool steel, quarter inch. Facing the end off. I'm using a PCB bit here because a regular center drill at this size into tool steel doesn't really work that well. And now we're getting down to our OD here. This is another time when the, uh, the CNC equipment does come in handy. Just using it like a motor drive, more or less. that ought to do it. It's hard to do this with the camera right in front of me. That'll do it. Little dike them and we're ready to start. Alright so this would normally be my thread check but I've run this program so many times this morning that uh, I don't need to check it. I'm gonna make five passes at uh, 2000. This is sped up quite a bit. The RPM on the uh, spindle is actually 300, uh, and that's about the speed I need for threading just so that the carriage can keep up with it. Um, it's just a small lathe. Now we're going to make two spring passes. And five more passes at 2,000. Two more spring passes at zero. Starting to shape up nicely now. Let's check it out with the uh, the thread mic. Yeah, doing it for the camera is not so easy. So uh, we're going to do six more passes at one thou each. That should get us right in there. And then we'll follow that up with a few uh, spring passes. Here come the spring passes. And we'll bring out the mic and do a final check. That looks pretty good. Alright, we can part off our screw now. I notice that it's, uh, it's running quite fast too. This is not the RPM that I cut it off at. Just trying to keep things moving along. Oh, there we go, across the room. And we'll face this off. And use a slitting saw here and put our slot in it.
Another Dicom cleanup, get a look at these screws. We'll be taking them up to, up to the uh, workbench and polishing them next before we harden them. Get them nice and uh, a really good finish on them before we harden them up. I'm doing the threads now with uh, uh, 220 grit uh, lapping compound and uh, that's a piece of uh, uh, popsicle stick type material. Uh, cut like a knife to get into the slots and polish it up. We're using 220 grit lapping compound on my watchmaker sleigh. This is an attachment I made so that I could power uh, the uh, iron lap uh, which is used for flattening the face of the screw and uh, with the power of the lathe it's easier. If you've done a good job of facing the screw on the lathe, it polishing's a lot easier. We're using the bell metal lap now. This is my favorite lap. It does a really good job and doing it all by hand. And we're polishing it with a diamantine mixed with oil right now. Okay, now we'll do the diamantine on the sides of the screw. And uh, this sometimes takes a little bit longer than the face. Uh, Now we're into the boxwood, and I'm. Uh, this is where you get your luster, and uh, I'm using uh, uh, diamond paste here uh, to get it up to that high luster. We still haven't hardened it yet, but it's much easier to do it while it's soft. So I try to get a really, really good luster on it before I harden it, and that makes it a lot easier uh, once I start uh, uh, working out the final polish. Once again, in between each one of these, we go into these little uh, cleaning areas like this one here. Between each step, you're using different tools and the tools have been cleaned and uh, you can't uh, contaminate the 220 with the 600 with the diamond polish. So you have to be really uh, uh, careful with that. I try not to touch the screw too much either. I uh, use uh, tweezers more than anything else to uh, clean it up. And we got to get all six of them done. Okay, I've got the screw covered with a combination of boric acid and alcohol, and I'm using map gas. I won't be uh, testing the hardness with a file though, because I've got it all polished up. So we'll, uh, I, I'm going to get it nice and red hot, and uh, I'm sure it's going to be hot enough. We won't start, we'll start with the threads again, uh, but we won't be using the iron lap this time. We'll go straight from the threads being polished here with the 600 right on to the bell metal. Yeah, the bell metal by far does the best job. It's uh, really quite amazing to me. And we're into the boxwood now and uh, the diamond paste on there. Not nearly as much work as the last one. And one of the cleanup stations. This is the final cleanup here. And you definitely don't want to touch it now because when you go to temper it, if you've touched it with your hands, it'll show up as it turns blue. And there we go, we begin it. It takes about four minutes to do a screw. I did them one at a time because I wanted them all the same color. And I just used my screw plate like that and uh, got them all done that way. And into the water once I see the color I want. And there you go, there's what they all came out looking like. They're pretty uniform in color. I was pretty happy with that. Plates are uh, too tall to fit under my grizzly mill, so I have to drill this hole with a uh, hand drill. And so I built this little jig. It's made out of a piece of uh, scrap from the, uh, the 
plates and I just uh, trued up two edges and then center drilled it and I'm using that to drill my hole and I'm kind of poke drilling through here uh, but I'll go all the way through down into the uh, uh, hole there uh, there you go now you can see it so we're through and now I'm tapping it gotta go slow on this I'm tapping it by hand And there we go. This is the last one. We'll screw it in there and all the feet are installed. We're ready to take this upstairs to the uh, to the bench and install the pillars and get a look at this. There we go. Well, there you go. There's a look at it from the top. And there's the bottom the buttons and washers and the screws and the feeder on there you can see a little bit of the uh, pillars there now next video I've already done a video on making of this uh, mainspring barrel uh, so I'm going to just make a short part on the making of the barrel and uh, then I gotta make the arbor that goes through the center of the barrel and I may install the spring this is the spring that goes in there and that's a pretty powerful spring uh, getting that in there is going to be fun. But I want to th thank you all for stopping by, and uh, thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day, okay?